Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sword, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this is going to be hopefully a quick little review for the problem you guys had for homework, activity number one for week number one. So the problem I'm looking at today is we're trying to launch a spaceship and we have to account for the fuel because, you know, like in this was real physics, we'd be using integration and all this kind of fancy, fancy math stuff to figure out how to get this spaceship, how much weight we need, and what's going to happen as the spaceship launches. But we're just trying to keep it simple. It's first, it's just, you know, it's the first example. So um, the, the big part of this here is this the idea of using a function. It says right here, the formula that you calculate, the one here where it's take the mass, divide by 5, and subtract 22. And you're supposed to just go ahead and have a formula, take an input parameter, and use the output. So, you know, so it's supposed to be an int for the return type. Uh, I'll just calculate weight or some or mass. Weight and mass are completely different things, especially when we're talking about spaceships. And then I could say, what is the mass of the spaceship? I guess you can say of, of spaceship. And so this formula is supposed to figure out what is the total mass return total mass of spaceship plus fuel required, right? And so just for the moment here, what we can just do is just say return, take the mass of the spaceship, because this is supposed to be the mass of the entire thing, and say, okay, take this and say, okay, now take the mass of the spaceship as we discussed, divide by 5, subtract 22, and call it a day, All right? So just to make, maybe make this a little simpler, just so you can kind of break it up into smaller pieces, you go, what is the mass of fuel? And something like this, right? Take the mass of the spaceship, divide by 5, subtract off 22. And then at the end of the day here, what am I trying to return? I'm trying to return the mass of the spaceship plus the mass of the fuel. And so we're using integers all across the board. So that's the truncation part of this. Truncate the division result. That's automatic when it comes to integer division. Mass of spaceship is integer. 5 is integer. So we're all good on that front. So let's just try it out. And so, you know, there's only one little thing we'll have to fix up here in a little bit, but we'll have to, we need to run a sentinel, a sentinel value, a uh, sentinel value function. First, this is first day back for me making videos. So I'm going to be a little more jumbly than normal. Um, so what are we going to do here? Well, I need to get some input, C out, oops, std colon colon C out, and you go enter. What is it? Enter value, enter mass of spaceship. I'll just, I'll just simplify it here. And then just say negative 1 to quit, colon. All right. And so then I will need, oh, I need a semicolon. What language am I running? OK, so then I need mass. And then I need to see in for it. OK, fair enough, right? So there's that. So I have my mass value. And I say, OK, so an int total fuel equals calculate mass when it comes to sending in the mass value that you input. And then for an output, let me just seal this so I can a little bit here so I don't have to type out every little detail. Total fuel required to launch. And then I can put that and then I can put total fuel, put an end line character in here, make it make us feel good about that. And then there we go. So that's part one, just trying this thing out. Let's see what we get when we run this. No compiler errors. And so just trying these things out, if I put 2020 in, I get 2402, which is expected. OK. I'll run this again. And you go, I'll try this with the 142, 756, and I get 171285. So so far, the first two test cases are coming out perfectly legitimate, perfectly normal. And so now the, the next thing to do is to look at this and go, oops, I'm sorry. Keep putting it over here. 30. Did I hit enter? There we go. And it says total fuel required to launch is 14. And that's not correct because the problem states that negative, because there can't be negative mass, because otherwise that would um, otherwise that would break the laws of physics. So anything that comes out as less than zero is supposed to be ca capped or clamped to the zero value. So our first step here is to fix this thing up. And so if, you know, like there's many ways to fix this thing up, but if I want to do this and say, oh, if the mass of fuel is, uh, is less than zero, then I can return just the mass of the spaceship. 
and then the else part would come after. But if I'm returning out of this function, then there's, no, there's nothing else after this function that will be performed. The return kicks me to line 14 immediately. It overrides everything else. So this line 13, lines 12 and 13 are essentially the else part of this condition. If the mass of the fuel is greater than or equal to zero, I guess we can just put an equal here just to be to make it a little easier because you know there's no reason to do a calculation if the mass of the fuel is zero. And so if the mass of the fuel is greater than zero, something that needs to be accounted for, then yes, we can go ahead and add the two values together and return back. So this should get us, so yeah, testing again, so 2020, 2402, fair enough. And then uh, we'll just say, you know, one, oops, I, 142756 brings me 171285. So it didn't affect those two test cases. But now the third test case, when it comes to 30, 30 in, 30 out. And that's much better now because 30 divided by 5 is 6. 6 minus 22 is minus 16. And so, of course, I, I want to make sure I cap that and clamp that back to 0 when I have to. OK, so that, that takes care of the function. Again, there's many ways to go ahead and do this. This is just one of many. And I've pretty much seen 20 to 24 different versions of it when I was grading that today. And so the, the, the bulk of the, the, you know, the actual function is done. The last thing remaining is this idea of the sentinel value. Because right now, all our program does is go one step at a time and just, just one iteration and quits. And so what we can do is something like you know, a while loop or something like a do while loop. Do while, there's nothing wrong with a do while loop here. And then go, OK, this int mass. And again, this is just one of many ways. And it's just what I'm coming up with as I'm doing it right now in the here and now. Do while mass is, does not equal negative 1. So you're like, OK. Let's try this the way we talk, you know, let's talked about it here. So let's try, I do 2020, and there we go, 2402, and I do 172,000, whatever. I'm not going to do the whole, you know, whatever. I'm just going to put numbers in, put my 30 in, 30 comes out 30, 9, negative 2, well, whatever. But, but negative 1 quits the program, but the only thing right now, the last final little step is, if I put a minus 1 in, it, I probably should not go ahead and print out a minus 1. It's just because I'm trying to quit immediately. And so if you wanted to, you could, one way to go about this, let me get rid of this here, is just to put an if statement around this. If mass does not equal negative 1. And this is where it just gets a little, it's a little tricky. Because you're, you're putting that if mass does not equal negative 1 in two places. Oops, let me, let me move this out of the way a little bit more for you guys. OK, so now you can try that out. 20, 20, 30, negative 1. The program quits out. So that's using a do while loop. And so this is what we what you see here, if I can get it all on one screen, is pretty much the solution, a, a completely working solution with a function that does its job and a main that loops through and quits with a sentinel value. OK, quick change here. So I changed this up. In the previous example, I was using a do while loop. And all I did was change this around down below. The function is the same, but I changed the main function to handle a while loop instead of a do while loop. And so instead of having the mass does not equal negative 1 in two places, essentially we're taking the input, uh, the prompt, and putting that in two separate places. So up front here is the priming read, enter the mass of a ship, negative 1 to quit. So if I do put a negative 1 in, it'll fall right out of the while loop immediately and not do anything. And that's what we're expecting to see. So if I put it in, but if, so if I put in a negative one, it won't, there's no other output and the program ends. But if I put any other value in, it goes through because you know, it goes into the while loop, calculates the mass, and it, and it prints out the total fuel required. And then it basically does a repeat of the prompt minus the setup of the mass when it comes to initialization and a declaration of the variable that just the, this line of code and this line of code just place, placed in there to get the mass another time. And so every time I don't put a ne negative 1, it'll continue to cycle through, do its job, and print out everything. And then when it hits the negative 1, it quits just like anything else. So I say 20, 20. That's 2402. 30 should get me 30. Negative 1 quits out immediately. So again, another completely different way to do things. And so, again, once you will see, especially since we're going to get this is advanced C++ programming or just, you know, just advanced programming in general, after a while, there are many, many ways to do even simple things. So 
you know, so everybody's code should diverge at some point, even if it's, you know, for any program of any, of any length, code should diverge, and your code, after a while, should not look like my code, and vice versa, and so forth, and so on. And so that is, this is the solution to the problem. So this is just for my students. I'm not going to put this online for everyone. So if you have any questions, make sure you email me at swordb at cod.edu. Uh, I never guarantee I don't make mistakes. I make plenty of mistakes every day of my life. Just ask my wife and my child and anyone else who deals with me. Um, so if there's a mistake here, I will fix it immediately. So, but anyway, thank you guys. Have a great semester. Make sure you get in contact with me at any time. I'm just sitting around waiting for you guys to ask me questions and actually do some programming. That's the fun part of my life. Coming up with problems and grading is not. So please send me questions if you ever have any doubts or, or any questions about anything going on. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you.